Hello everyone, this is Adrian Z, and today, this beast before you is an automatic sugarcane farm tower. Let's get inside, you can see it's a square. Now this is the same tower that I recently built in my SMP world on the Toon Crafty server, and it's been doing pretty good. Had a couple requests to do a tutorial on it, so here it is. Um, this is uh, eight layers, you can see if you count the redstone wires there, that's every layer. We have eight in this particular tower, but this could be stacked all the way from bedrock to the build limit. Each layer is only three blocks tall, so that could allow for a pretty large farm. Uh, the one in my SMP server is only ten tall, and it gives me plenty for my villager trading, but you can build it larger or smaller depending on your needs. I'm just going to sneak inside here. You can see one layer. Um, I froze the timer so this is starting to grow um, but you can see the basic idea on the inside here is each layer has 36 sugarcane plants uh, with the water next to them. Let's see if I can get in there we go. If we break a couple of these blocks you can see <laughs> there's water above them but through the water you can see there's a piston behind that block. Those are sticky pistons so these blocks will all be pushed forward uh, every time the machine fires and it will harvest this top row of sugarcane and the nice thing about this design 100% efficient every single block of sugarcane that is knocked off will end up in this water stream fall down this hole all the way to the bottom into your collection hopper and go down into your collection system now let's come back outside we'll show you it fire one time um, this is just your basic hopper timer. Um, every time it toggles, it'll just flash this signal very briefly, which will turn this torch on for just a second. Um, but that pulse is just a little bit too fast, so this right here is just a basic pulse extender because we want the pistons to stay forward for just a moment because we actually want the pistons to go forward, then the sugar cane to fall into the water, and then the pistons to retract. If the pistons just pop out and back, some of the sugar cane will actually be able to fall back into the dirt. We don't want that. So that's why we have a little pulse extender here. And then of course, for this demonstration, I just have a single hopper. Now if I knock this out, we get it on the bar, you can see that's the hole we were just looking inside. And put that back. And then just a simple chest, we'll empty this out here so we can see that we get it all. I'm going to go ahead just so we can show the efficiency. I'm going to run in and make sure that all the sugar cane is grown and then we'll make sure that it all ends up in the chest with our test. Alright, so as you can see as I fly out of here, I've waited for this all to grow and of course by waiting for it all to grow I, I helped it out just a little bit. Uh, but Let's give you a little bit of information about what's about to happen. So there are 36 uh, plants per layer this particular tower here has eight layers for a total of 288 sugarcane, which means exactly four and a half stacks should appear in this chest. Let me just get all this out of here. Clear our inventory from the previous testing. Um, so you can see here, this chest is empty. Our inventory is completely empty. And we're gonna fire this one time and if it all works, we should hopefully get exactly four and a half stacks inside this chest. And we're going to do an easy method to make sure that nothing gets stuck in here. If you look on the F3 screen, you can see entity 0 slash 1. That 1 is, of course, me. If we switch to viewing myself, you can see that now says 1 of 1. This being that I am being rendered at the moment and there is one total entity in this world. Now this is going to be useful for our little test here because if I uh, just grab a random item, let's just grab this block. If you see, if I throw this on the ground, it now says one of two. That's the block. So I am one, the block is one, we're rendering the block. If I go to F5 mode here, tab out, you can see with me and the block in it now says two of two. And if we pick up this block, it goes back to zero of one. Even if the block is behind us, then it's just 0 of 2, so we can tell how many entities are uh, present inside this tower. If we look at it right now, of course, I'm the only one. When we fire it, 
a bunch is going to appear and then hopefully this will go back to zero of one because it'll all end up in the hopper in this chest and stop being counted. So that's how we'll know how the efficiency is working. Of course, before I actually fire this, I will say um, if you get lag when it's firing, it is possible that a tiny bit will get stuck on there. And the fact that I'm recording right now means that when all these pistons fire, I may see a tiny bit of loss, but we should get at least 98, 99% while the recording's going. Uh, so let's just go ahead, flip the tower, and watch, watch the uh, E again, just right here. If you watch this, you'll see all the sugar cane firing on the inside. And we're going to go ahead and flip which side is locking it right now. This side right here, that uh, flips the tower. You see the E entity just shot up uh, about 150, 160, shooting up into the top peak about 180. And some of that's already falling. You can see the number is drastically dropping as it all falls down in and it went back to zero of one so that's good it looks like it all made it this time and there are no more entities sitting in this tower which means there's no more entities sitting on the dirt which is great so if we check this chest you can see it's starting to pour in we got almost a stack there and then there's another uh, we've got three um, i'm gonna cheat what you're gonna see here of course my inventory is currently empty so if i just suck all this out of the hopper let's push all it into the chest exactly four and a half stacks which means every single piece of sugarcane was grown every single piece of sugarcane got knocked off by a piston and every single piece of sugarcane landed in the water and ended up in our sorting cell so as you can see 100 percent efficient let's build this sucker Real quick before we get building, um, this will be included in the world download that I'll provide with this video. Uh, this is a layer breakdown um, block by block. Um, what you're seeing here is each portion of the layer stretched out enough that you can squeeze in between here and see exactly what's going on. Um, of course, water and sugar cane don't float, so those are being represented by uh, the green is the sugar cane, the wool. Here is your water source blocks and any of the glass is your flowing water. As I mentioned, each layer is only three blocks tall. Um, so what you're seeing here is this is block one, block two, and block three of the layer. This one here is just this layer right here again. Um, you need it at least one time on top to make a ceiling for the top layer, although you don't need the water if that's your top layer. And then this right here, you do need this one ring around the very bottom of your tower. It's to hold the bottom layer of water in, since of course, again, water does not float. So to build this, all you need is a building block of choice, some dirt. I use glowstone to light the pads. Um, it is not completely necessary. Um, you could use pumpkins instead as well. I just like the look of it. Uh, you'll need some water and you, then of course you'll need sugar cane to plant. So what you want to do, you're going to need a little bit of space underneath it again as we saw earlier. We need a collection area. Um, so you need at least a little bit of room to get underneath there. And we're going to start with this bottom layer right there, which is just a 13 by 13 square. So if we start right here and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, plus the one that was already there is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11, 12, 13. And two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then just bring this around. This is only on the bottom, and this is to hold in the very first layer of water, as shown right there. All right. So now that we have our base, we're going to go ahead and build the first layer, which is first. We're going to come in here, take our building block right there and then we want to go dirt it should be nine blocks of dirt and then just a filler block on the corner there and we're going to go all the way around with that this is what the sugar cane will be planted on so there we are and then of course we need to put a row of water right here but water will spill out everywhere which means we need to come around and make another ring at the same height all the way around this first layer just like this.
and that creates our water channel which of course all you need you can go and make solid blocks all the way if you want but it's not necessary just stick one block of water in each corner and as you can see it fills up the entire channel which would allow you to plant sugarcane the entire way around this dirt now we need to fill this in because water is going to sit on top of it so we need to put a single row of uh, solid blocks here now this could some of these portions could be glass some of them cannot um, but what we're going to do is with one ring if you just come in every corner stick a glowstone or a jack-o-lantern or you can't even use redstone lamps with a lever on the bottom to power them would work as well and that will create enough lighting to not worry about any mobs spawning on your sugar cane and getting knocked into your system um, they won't really get in the way of course zombies could spawn in there and pick up your sugar cane but yeah, stupid zombies all right so we're gonna fill this in all but the very center block right here and that is that layer completed the next layer we just come over here we're gonna cover up the water and that corner right there it's very important that we cover up this corner because we don't want any sugarcane to accidentally shove into that corner so we're just gonna fill in just like this cover up all the water and cover up our single spacer block right there all right from here we should be able to go around and plant sugarcane every single piece of dirt on this layer do that it means your water is placed correctly and there we are the next layer is going to power our pistons have our pistons as well let's see we're just going to come up any block on this row you're going to go out two blocks knock those out and then you want to make a ring that's one bigger than this layer here all the way around just like that it should be one bigger than your thing and it should be right there let's grab the sticky pistons that I forgot we'll need we'll throw it on the ground okay if we just go around what we want to do is place a piston along the back of each thing of sugarcane so there are 36 pistons per layer the reason that I use sticky pistons in this design instead of regular pistons is due to the way the wiring and the water sit it becomes very simple to do with sticky pistons and very ugly to do with regular pistons uh, so all that's left now is just this same layer of blocks here we just want to build on top of it all the way around like that okay so it's time for some very complicated redstone are you ready uh, first we need to pick which corner of the tower we want our redstone torch line to go up which is what you see over there uh, let's just say this corner right here so we're gonna knock that block out you're gonna take some redstone dust you're going to run it from that corner all the way to the second to last block right there where we will stick a repeater. This is just because redstone doesn't go this far and we need to extend it around this corner which we will take the redstone dust all the way to the end of the pistons. Then repeat this on the other side. All the way, second last block on the end. Whoops, don't knock that block out. That needs to be there. Repeater goes here and then again just dust all the way to there this corner doesn't need anything on it and you can see if we had a power source right here for example let's just uh, do this if I power this all of the pistons fire and when this unpowers they all retract so that's all there is to it. Now you need to stack uh, your three layers, which is of course here, here, and here. Just stack this on top of each other. So the way you would stack the next layer is you just place a block here, 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 and here. And you would then fill those in 
with the dirt, like so. And that's where your next layer of sugarcane will be planted. It is, you would then add your row of solid blocks around the middle on the inside here. And once you get to the very top layer of your tower, that's as far as you need to go on the top layer. You don't actually need to fill it in if you don't want to, but you do need these two blocks. Of course, you wouldn't have to have it dirt on your ceiling either, but you do need these two blocks to make sure the sugar cane doesn't go flying anywhere crazy when it gets hit with the pistons. Um, and then, of course, you can see it's starting to look just like it is below there, so you'd put your new lights here, 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 and here, and you'd go around and fill this whole thing in just like this all the way till you just add the one block in the center and I'll just show you real quick here the only thing that's gonna look different you've got the pistons here not a problem you're just adding this is of course the outer ring of that first layer again right over the top of the pistons and this gap that sits around next to them just like so you want to make sure you don't miss anything before you place the next layer of water of course you would wash your redstone away so don't do that so there you go this is starting to look just like the bottom again you just water in the corner water in the corner in the corner and the corner and you can see it's starting to look just like that first layer did the only thing that we're missing is we didn't finish filling this in like I said just to the center block there see it lines up just nicely and then you would continue to stack now the one thing I did forget better do that right inside here when you're done with the layer once you've got your sugar cane down because it's a lot easier just come in put a water block right there you'll notice it does this trippy little corner thing put one in this corner if you put one in this corner and you put one in this corner voila you can see water flows all the way no matter where it lands it's gonna end up in the center and fall down this hole to our collection area so at this point what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna keep stacking uh, just like this shows here you're gonna wanna just continue stacking these three layers right here over and over and over until you've got your tower as tall as you want it. Um, it can't even be just one layer uh, or you can make it ridiculously tall. Just keep in mind that 36 pistons per layer firing all at once will give you a small frames per second drop every time it triggers. So keep that in mind. If you don't have an insane computer keep it a little smaller. So go ahead build up your tower as much as you want and then we'll add the timer. Okay, so while you were off building this in your actual world, I went ahead and stacked it up in MC Edit because I can do that because I'm cheating and making a tutorial. So, I just want to again remind you very quickly, in case you skipped ahead earlier, make sure you don't forget the water on the inside of this. Once your sugar cane is planted, you need a block of water in all four corners on the inside, which is what's going to catch your sugar cane and push it down your tunnel. And just again, a quick demonstration on your ceiling you need at least this much above your top layer which is a row right directly above the sugar cane and a row one out from that and that just makes sure that your sugar cane doesn't go flying off into the oblivion when the pistons fire so let's go ahead we're gonna build our redstone torch tower here if we just come down you can go ahead and put a block in the first one put a torch on there is probably the easiest way to do it doesn't matter which direction you go just got to go the same way so you're gonna put a torch on here that's gonna power that row and then we're just gonna keep stacking this zigzagged up like so and the reason we're zigzagging this instead of doing um, just straight up torch tower if we have uh, torches like this for example what will happen is every other layer will be powered while every other layer is unpowered and we don't want that we want them all to be powered or unpowered at the same time and what this zigzag pattern does is if you'll notice on this layer this torch is off when the system fires and inverts this torch this will turn on and it'll fire this entire layer's worth of pistons and on every other one what you'll see 
is they're coming out of this block. So this block is going to get powered by this torch, which is just like this torch. This one will power this block, which powers this redstone. And if we keep going here, you'll notice on the next one it's back. This torch powers those. And on every other one, it's going to be that same pattern. So on this one, the block powers it just like that. And of course, when you get to your top layer, uh, make sure if it is a layer with a block, uh, you need to have something above it. So if your top layer is a torch layer, that's where you're going to want to end it right there. If your top layer is a block layer, then you're going to have your torch here, block right there, and you're going to want to end it right there. And just take that all the way up your tower. Okay, so now that your tower is built, there's just one important thing to check. You want to make sure the torches that are going to your redstone wiring, like this one here, are currently in the off position. If they are currently in the on position, like this, just simply go underneath. You want to add one more torch to the bottom to make sure that they are all off. Next, what we need to do is hook our redstone timer into this block right here. We want to power this block whenever we want to fire our system. So we're just going to come out, put a block right there like that, then two like this, and like this, and like this, and like this. I think. You're going to need some redstone, and you're going to need some repeaters. You're going to have a redstone going into that block, and then you're going to grab it from two lines here, which is going to look like this. You need all of these repeaters on four tick delay facing that direction. And then we're going to need redstone dust going into each of those and a torch right here. Now, right now this is going to be powered. That's okay. It's going to get inverted in just a second. Um, but you can see when the system is on down here, it inverts this torch, which inverts every torch on the tower. So the ones that were off are now on, which means all of our pistons become extended. From here we want to hook up our hopper timer. So you want to come out from here and you need a shape just like this coming off the back of that and just put redstone dust on all three of those so that this redstone faces into this block so that when this turns on this will turn off and from here on the edge of this we need to have two blocks and then two blocks out on this side two blocks out on this side that should be six long put a second layer on right there and that will be big enough to house our hopper timer and all you need to do for that block on each side you need some pistons, some comparators, a redstone block, some sticky pistons. I'm just going to do this real fast because there are a lot of videos. You just need a hopper. Oop, fallen. You just need a hopper facing into that one. Break that like that. So you want your two hoppers facing into each other. Comparators coming out on both sides. Redstone dust there and there. And then you need a sticky piston coming off of that. Oop, oop, face it correctly of course like that and <laughs> I'm bad with the flying today alright there you go so you have two pistons facing towards each other like that stick a redstone block in there you can see now with the redstone in place this is powered this is unpowered all the pistons are retracted I find on the timer uh, just take four stacks of anything that stacks into 64 shove them in one of the hoppers there and you're done um, you can add an off switch to this entire tower by simply placing a uh, lever on either of these blocks here or here and then of course when you power them it'll force it to stay powered depending on where your stuff is when you put the lever it may finish ticking to one side and shift one more time but then it'll turn off uh, so if we demonstrate, we're going to actually just remove all this so we can see it. Let's get rid of most of that. There we go. Just want a few in here. Pardon the frame rate drop while this fires over and over. But what you're going to see is every time that fires, you saw that pulse shoot through over here through our pulse extender. Watch. There it goes again. And every time that happens, it inverts the torches. And you can see all of the pistons fire. We come up here and just kind of look at this top layer. Wait for him to fire again. So 
box come out and they go back in and that's all there is to it your tower's done uh, let's come back in here and uh, put that back up to four stacks all right uh, you can experiment a little bit with the time and the hoppers here i find that four stacks like that are pretty good um, you could also if you want you may replace this bit of uh, redstone you can push this whole thing over one put a uh, repeater in and then a redstone dust in and what that'll do is it'll only fire every other time and that'll allow you to actually double the timer here if you wanted to do something like that but it's not necessary there's your tower um, again I will have a world downloaded included in the description of this video uh, let me know what you think and if you have any questions feel free to ask I'm more than happy to help um, again this is the tower we just built this is a pretty much identical to the one that was in the demonstration before and of course here's the layer by layer breakdown for you uh, so that's been it that's your 100 percent efficient sugarcane farm I will add on one little snippet at the end here I was testing this out while running Optifine earlier today and I found that in a single player world with Optifine running the efficiency of this farm greatly reduced it went from near 100 percent to like maybe I would say probably 60 ish percent in some tests sometimes it wasn't that bad um, but if you are having problem with the efficiency of this farm and you're using Optifine try loading the game up without Optifine and see if that fixes the problem for you again any questions leave them in the comments hit me up on Twitter send me a direct message whatever you want to do I will definitely answer your questions hope you enjoyed this tutorial have a great day everyone bye bye